All right, good afternoon to everyone. Looks like I got sound at least going to OBS. Hopefully we're good there. Let's get the rest of this stuff set up here. Chat windows, somewhere where we can see them. Let's turn off this preview. Switch over? Yeah, this one's caught up now. There we go. Okay. So this one's paused. I don't know what this one's doing. Show the current state, it seems like. Good. Right though. Certainly need that. How's it going, C. Grover? Good afternoon. Put that. There we go. Okay, uh, so hello to everybody. Uh, my name is Tim. Um, happy Friday, uh, first of all. Um, thanks for tuning in for everybody who's watching this. This is the CircuitPython Deep Dive program, which is a weekly live stream program where we are working on various dis different aspects of CircuitPython. Sometimes, uh, you know, down into the deepest layer, the C code uh, in the CircuitPython core. Uh, sometimes in the library layer, sometimes in the infrastructure like GitHub Actions and documentation and things like that. Uh, just depends from week to week what's going on. This week, uh, we're going to start out in library land. We're going to look at the HT16K33 library, um, and then we'll see if there's any time after that. We may jump to something else, but we'll see how it goes with this first. Uh, so we'll be doing that. I will say though, before we get too far down the road here, let's just take a quick step back for anybody that might be new. Uh, didn't mean to refresh that, that's fine though. Uh, for anybody that might be new, if you don't know what this stream is about, you can learn more at the main website right here for the project, uh, circuitpython.org. CircuitPython is basically an implementation of Python that is designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, like this Adafruit Feather uh, ESP32 S3 TFT uh, Feather right here. Um, this is one of the microcontrollers that can run CircuitPython. Basically, the idea behind this is that this device, uh, when you plug it into your computer, it shows up like a thumb drive. On that thumb drive, there's a Python code file. You can edit the code in that file, and then the computer, which is in the main chip on this board, will actually execute your Python code for you. Uh, will interpret it and execute it for you. So uh, all of that happens on the computer that is actually built into the device. In this case, it's actually on the bottom side. We can't get a good look at it. Um, but the photos here, you can see a lot more of them. Like the main chip here is the computer on this one. Same thing, I think, here and this chip here. So it's like each of these devices will have kind of a, a main brain that is the, uh, the primary kind of computer. And that's the device that runs CircuitPython on all these different devices. So. That's the kind of stuff we're getting into. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or anything like that, feel free to drop them in the chats. The two that I have open are uh, the Discord and YouTube, which are both down on the screen below me. On Discord, we're in the uh, Adafruit Discord, which you can join at adafru.it slash Discord. And we are in the live broadcast chat right now, uh, which is where folks tend to congregate when there is a live stream uh, going on. Um, how's it going, Axel Magnus? Um, let's see, anything else here? So CircuitPython, yeah, if you wanna, uh, CircuitPython, it's an open source project. Anybody's allowed to use it. You're allowed to put it on your own devices. You're even allowed to, uh, if you're a manufacturer, you're allowed to port CircuitPython to run on your own devices as well. Uh, you don't need to pay for licensing or anything like that. You're just allowed to use it. Um, and it is developed or uh, primarily, you know, funded by this company, Adafruit. This is their website, adafruit.com. Uh, they are a hardware and software company based out of New York. Uh, they're the ones who are paying the team who work on CircuitPython project. The, uh, there's a core team who's paid full time to work on the project. There are other folks like me who are part time uh, and are paid to work on the project and the surrounding uh, stuff. So thank you, of course, to Adafruit for doing that. Thank you to everybody who wants to uh, purchase hardware from them in order to help support it, because obviously if you are Buying hardware from them, that is helping keep the Adafruit factory running, keep money coming into them, 
which is allowing them to be able to pay the folks who are working on the software. So head there, buy yourself some toys. Uh, they make the microcontroller devices like the ones we discussed that run CircuitPython. They also make all sorts of stuff that you can plug into your microcontrollers. Uh, like in uh, the case today, what I have is this uh, 14 by four segment device, which is a uh, Featherwing device, which you, uh, which was also designed and manufactured by Adafruit in this case, Featherwing segment. So uh, you can head there, get yourself uh, all kinds of neat toys, uh, including microcontrollers, as well as things that you can plug into your microcontrollers and do stuff with. Uh, in this case, we'll be playing with some of these things today, these 14 by four segments. Okay, how's it going, Mike KC? Uh, no, excuse me, Mike C. I don't know where I got KC from. Guess you got the K in Mike, but uh, close that down. So today I'm going to be jumping into HTK uh, 16. No, HT, I did it backwards, didn't I? Did I put it, I probably put it backwards in the title, even, didn't I? Did I do that? Or it's, it's not in the title, I guess, technically. Eh, whatever. We'll go back and try to look at it later. Uh, I might have gotten it back, backwards. I, I like to call it HTK for some HTK 16? I don't know. Uh, but it's actually HT16K33, which is the driver. Um, I have a pull request in there for some non-blocking text scrolling that I am getting back around to this week to look into the suggestions I've gotten, which are like see if we can make it behave the same as the blocking version and then potentially try to refactor it uh, to cut down the size of the library, like make one function um, rely on the other one so that we can get rid of some of the code in one of them so that we don't have two copies of more or less the same logic. Um, so that's what I'll get back to. That's probably what we'll spend the majority of the time on. Before I do jump straight into that, though, I wanted to actually play around with this for a minute, um, and I figured it would be perfect to do it since it kind of goes along with the same device, HT16K33. Um, this is a thing I saw go by the other day that got added to the community bundle. This is a library from Jose David, uh, has made this one, so uh, hug report to Jose. This is like a uh, almost like an emulator that runs, um, that pretends to be this HT16K33 driver. And so um, in my case, I'm using a 14 by four segment, but the same chip can actually drive an eight by eight matrix of LEDs like this. So um, this driver here that uh, Jose has created is like, uh, you know, kind of emulating a HT16K33 on a screen. Whereas obviously like the real one has physical lights, you know, physical LEDs inside of this thing. Uh, so this is like a virtual one. It's not necessarily, you know, using the same driver, but it is, um, you know, uh, aiming to give you the same kind of visual output, just uh, fully virtual. So I thought this was really cool. I wanted to spend just a minute to try to load it up on a device and play around with it for a minute before I jump into uh, the actual code for the hardware driver for that device. Um, so we'll do that. I'm going to clone this. We can open it up. Oh no, did I just let it create a V? I did. It's terrible. Okay, we're gonna delete this. I really want a virtual environment for this. I just want to delete it. Just delete it. I cannot let me delete it. It's terrible. Left me no choice. Um, I'll grab this, put it on a device. Is it 
than that. Display there it is. Okay, it is in there. And I'll have to look in the examples. I'm not entirely sure how to like generate it. Let's see. Initialize it or whatever. We go 14 by 4 first, since that's what I have the physical device of. Server. Uh, glare, but can here. I think I turned auto reload off, maybe. So I think we need to do get this one here to reset. Oh, and then it will need uh, to have while true, actually. Yeah, that might be. Have that in there? Might be good to add that to the repo. Maybe we can PR that. Yeah, I should have probably while true here. So the thing is, like, it will draw how it is now. It will draw, but then it will immediately go back to uh, the REPL. It will immediately go back to the serial output, so then you won't be able to see it, because it will just get covered up after, like, a split second. Or not covered up, but, like, drawn over. Uh, that's right, we'll just add that one in there, save that. I should be able to do it this time, I think. Go. Yeah, nice, there we go. We have... Uh, we technically have four digits. It looks like mm, we might not have enough room, or actually, I guess maybe this is at, I'm guessing this is X, Y. Maybe we can go, let's go not so far down, and then uh, let's try it. We might need to go all a uh, zero, actually. I don't know if we have enough room to fit all of this on here. Yeah, not quite, actually. We're a little bit shy on the room, which is all right. 30, but it, and then you could be able to change this with... These numbers here would be able to change what it is. Yeah. Nice. Is it a font or how does it font five? Is that the is that for the segments? I think that's just like a picture. Oh, that's in the docs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curious how it works. Let's take a quick peek in segments. It just have shapes in here, typing, characters, has bit mass for all of them, numbers. It's like shapes, I'm thinking. Five digits, about two points, circle, yep. So these are coming from... Uh, Vector IO. Nice. And polygons for the segments. So it's basically got one polygon for each segment. And it basically makes this like pointed shape. The line with the like comes to a point at the end. Just how seven segments are, or 14 segments in this case. Neat. Okay. So and then it's got. I believe a very similar, if not the same, yeah, API. So it can also do stuff like marquee. So we could say instead of print, maybe like time, let it do that first and then, whoops. Oh, the sleep is before the show. Whoops. Oh, and also Marquee is blocking, so we'll never actually show it. Let's 
answer it that way. There we go. Get some scroll action going there. Nice, cool. Uh, let's do, I wanna do the RGB matrix real fast, or not RGB, but I wanna do the matrix real fast and then we'll jump into the real hardware. Just I think was matrix, yeah, let's do this one. Take six, but two were given. Looks like we need some extra arguments, maybe. These ones just have X, Y, radius, text. The radius text. That's pretty simple. X, Y of the... And there are no defaults, so we will need to pass them. That's just X, Y coordinates in pixels. Radius is how big the LEDs. Define if it will be used for text. Huh. Interesting. I didn't know that. The frame buffer. Hmm. Interesting. Text. So we'll do, uh, we'll do text false for now. So we'll say... Say x, um, I'll just say maybe like, I'll just do 4, y, 4, radius. Um, we can go pretty small probably, like, two. what if we do radius 2 or 3? Let's try 3. Text, else. Nice. Go a little bigger. It really is uncanny how much it does end up looking like the uh, actual LEDs. Like I do have one of these eight by eights. This is obviously the fourteen by four, not the not the eight by eight segments. But it does a really good job of pretending to be the the physical one. Six. Try to get it so it's like taking up most of the space we have on the screen there. Sure, we feel a little bit like we don't feel equally. It feels like our X and Y are not quite equal. Maybe Y is not top left. I didn't actually read all the docs. No, it should be top left. Yeah. That's right. We'll just move it up some. F. Do we do zero or should we go negative even? Is that all of it or do we have a little bit more down there? That's definitely all of it now. Do we could still come up just a had to uh, make it even, but nice. All right, cool. Like I said, uh, hug reports to Jose. This is in the community bundle now, so if anybody wants to play with this, it's out on Disco. Uh, excuse me, out on um, GitHub, and you can also get it from like Circa, I believe, if since it's in the community bundle. Um, so yeah, very cool. And so what we are working on next is the actual hardware version specifically of the 14 by fours. And what I am looking into most specifically is the non-blocking marquee. 
which is what branch we're in. We should probably try to update main though and merge before we really do much of anything else, just because possibly there have been updates that, yeah. Let's go ahead and push those just so we're up, up to date. We're in line with main now. We're, we're, we're back to one or two commits, however many ahead of main, but we're not, we're not behind by any. So originally there was this function marquee, um, which is blocking. When you call this function, if, if loop is true, then this function will never return. It will just uh, essentially be a while true loop inside of here, which you can see pretty clearly in the logic as well. If loop is false, then it will return, but not until after it's done scrolling the whole text. So if we were to scroll the text, hello deep divers, like we did earlier, it will scroll the entire text, hello deep divers, and then it will return at the very end. Um, which works fine if that's the only thing that you wanna do, but if you want to intermix that with, with other stuff like uh, run an HTTP server or have some NeoPixels connected and run LED animations on the NeoPixels at the same time while you're running a marquee on the, on the segments or whatever, um, then you can't really do this because of the way that this blocks means that no other code inside your code file uh, like your code.py file, no other code can really be executing once you have called marquee like this because you know it's either going to stay inside here forever if that loop is true, or if loop is false, then it will eventually end, but not until after it's scrolled the entire thing. So that could be like several seconds or something, which is far too slow if you're trying to do you know an animation or uh, like run a server or something like that. And so what I added was the non-blocking marquee. here this one has basically the same arguments that have all the same meanings the, the the arguments all do the same things the key difference with this one though is that it does return it returns instantly um you know pretty much no matter what and so what it will do is it will keep track of time on its own it will keep track of how like how long it needs to wait until it's supposed to you know, do the next step of the marquee, like scroll the letters over by one. And then whenever the time comes to do that, it will go ahead and carry it out. Um, but then it will also just return right away again. So the idea is you need to call non-blocking marquee inside your main loop. Um, and each time you call it, it will check and see if it needs to actually scroll or not. If it does, then it will go ahead and do it. If it doesn't, then it will just return instantaneously and what that means is you're now free to do other stuff inside your main loop because you can call non-blocking marquee, you know, once inside your main loop, but then you can also call like, you know, LED animation dot animate. And then you can also call, you know, my server dot pull or whatever. Like you can do all of these things all inside your main loop since none of them will be blocking at that point. So you can kind of like, it's, it's not really the same as different threads because uh, it is still serially done, right? One after the other. Uh, but it it on the human time scale, um, you know, in the in the terms that we think of in seconds and things like that, it, it may as well be doing all three of those things at the same time because it's going through them so fast that we're able to essentially, you know, have each of the three do what we want with the time it's got. So what we want to do though is uh, test some more to make sure that non-blocking marquee and marquee behave the same, that they make the text look the same as they're scrolling. If there are differences, uh, most likely then those differences are gonna be around the, the period character, which is a special character for this particular device because the period character makes it so that you can actually display eight total digits, right? Uh, ordinarily, you've got your 14 by four, that means you've got 14 segments inside of each one of these digits, and you've got four digits, so you know, 14 by four. And so ordinarily you could show four digits at a time, right? You can show four letters or four numbers or some combination of numbers and letters, but because the period is actually on its own over here, it's not part of the rest of the shape, 
it can actually put the period on as well as show a letter or a number in that character, which means that technically if you have all four periods on, you actually can have a string with eight characters because it can be one letter or number, then a period, then another letter or number, then a period, another period, another period. So you can have eight digits total. So if there is a difference, most likely it's gonna be around the handling of that. We want to make them so that they behave the same. And then if we can, we want to make it so that um, one or the other of these functions will kind of rely on the code in the other one. That way we don't have to have essentially the same logic implemented twice. Because right now we kind of do. Inside of non-blocking marquee here, it's essentially got all the logic that makes this work. And then inside of marquee here, it has, well, it technically it calls scroll marquee here, so it goes down inside of here, but it's one layer deeper, but it essentially has, you know, all the same logic that we have up here, right? These are, in essence, doing roughly the same thing. If we could make one use the other one, then we could get rid of some, you know, what is ultimately repeated code at this point. It's not like character for character, line for line, the exact same. It's just that it has the same functionality, so... Um, First thing we could do is let's just get it on our device. It's been a little while since I ran this. I don't even think I have ever done it on this device. Uh, I finally have busted out a uh, uh, an S3 TFT feather and put uh, pins on it. I've had one on my desk for a while, but I did not have any pins on it, so I was unable to use it with feather wings and things like that. But I finally have soldered some pins on there, so I can finally stop stealing the uh, the S2 feather that I use for the timestamper during the weekly meetings when I run them. Uh, we can copy that. Let's go to libs folder. Already exists. Yeah, we'll overwrite it, I guess. Guess it looks like I did already have it, I suppose, but it's all right, we'll overwrite it on there. Okay, let's grab the... Uh, non-blocking marquee. Okay, yep, I turned off auto reload. We could maybe, do we want to turn auto reload back on? Maybe let's turn auto reload back on for now. No I2C address. Uh oh. Um, well, I think there's... I think there's, um... Jumpers on the bottom to change the address. Maybe mine has the non, maybe I don't have the standard address. I don't know. I would have thought my sample code would be as whatever I had, but. Yeah, see these here are jumpers that are going to let you set the address, basically. Yeah, 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 here we go, okay. Oh, so default is 0x70, but you can change it anywhere from 0x70 to 0x77. So 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77. We have eight total, should be, because we have three digits of binary, basically. All right, uh, let's look at mine. Actually, no, I guess this must be... Unfortunately, we got to take it off to get it visible. Ah, yep, there you go. A0. Okay, so what does that mean? A0... A0 sets the lowest bit, so... Uh, 71, we should have... 
Here, I gotta, gotta put the camera back, but I don't think I can do this without pulling it out of frame. But... Maybe we can get it lined up. There we go. You can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit. All right, 71. We just go uh, to here. Should probably um kill the light from this. So we have this NeoPixel is blinking back and forth between pink and green, and then we have this text here is scrolling. Uh, circuit Python heart, circuit Python heart over and over and over. And it, it with the standard marquee, it would not be possible to have this NeoPixel blinking like this because marquee would be blocking. We would not be able to set this back and forth. But because we have non-blocking marquee, we're able to have other stuff inside of our main loop here. So we have some extra logic that changes the color of the NeoPixel here back and forth. Um, and so for now, I'm actually going to get rid of the blinking of the NeoPixel. We're going to just scroll this. And what we will do is actually let's scroll some different text with periods. So let's say long text here circuit python and then i'll say like let's, let's say uh let's say four digits with no say four digits with no periods and then then four digits with periods and then well, yeah, let's just start with that. Long text here, circuit, Python, 8888, 5.5.5. .5 Long text. So if you notice when the periods come on, it kind of gets like this stuttering type thing going on a little bit. It feels like it stutters, but the thing is that it's not technically stuttering. Really what it's doing is it's spending the exact same amount of time on every character, and it's including the periods as a character. So it's waiting while it's rendering the period, but because the periods are special and they don't take up the segment place, the, uh, the character place, the characters that are visible stay where they're at during that frame when we render the period, so... It makes it so it kind of doesn't look like it's scrolling. What I don't know for sure, though, is... How does the original one look when you do that? I do not know. I need to see if it's the same or not, and then if it's not, we'll try to match it. Um, Although I, I did think about it a bit, and I kind of think this is the best way. So if this one is different, it's worth considering whether we want to do it differently or not. But for now, we will try to match. Because the thing is, you could get rid of that stuttering um, by basically making it so that the periods don't take any time. You could make them instantaneous. But then you actually have, you end up with the person who's reading it has less time to read potentially twice as many characters. Like they could have eight characters visible and they would actually have half the amount of time to read it as they would if we have it run this way. So 
see what it does. Oh, I don't think we... Uh, is loop true by default? I don't know. It does skip them. It does skip them. So you, you don't see the stutter. You don't see the stutter. But basically the consequences are actually that you need to be able to read this twice as fast. Which I guess like, you know, it's the periods anyway. It's like, it's not really eight characters. It is, it is eight characters, but I don't know. Doesn't exactly count. Okay, so... So we want to make it so that we have matching behavior. So we want the we we want to basically not spend any time when the most recent character we rendered was a period. Whenever we render a period, we want to just immediately render the next character instantaneously. But not if it's but not if it it is a period though, right? Wouldn't this make it weird? You can maybe shorten this a bit. Okay, it keeps a steady rate. It does keep a steady rate. Whoa. It goes so much faster, that first bit there. That was interesting. Maybe that was the video stream. Maybe that wasn't the actual device. I don't know. I wasn't actually looking at it. I was looking at the video. Okay. So this should make it to where we can only see one character. Yeah. By the time that we can see the next one, the first one scrolls off the other edge. Whoops. So It's actually closer to the current behavior, but still not quite the exact same. So how does marquee actually work? So it says, if it is a text, a string rather, self.fill false, I don't know what that does. I assume that's going to empty everything out there to fill the display. Fill the whole display with the given color. I guess by doing false, it's making the given color at zero, zero, and by color, in this case, what they actually mean is uh, turn the light on or off, which in our case, we're going off because we're doing false. If loop, then we have while true. Inside here, we just say self.scroll marquee. Scroll marquee says text, string delay float. Scroll through the text string once using the delay. So it says character is dot for character in text self dot print which is adding a character to the right side i'm pretty sure print the value string or float decimal Not sure what that means
Both dot print character. Add delay if the character is not a dot or more than two in a row. If character is not dot or character is not dot or R is dot. But this will be false the first time. Okay. False the first time. It says sleep. And it says, if it was a dot, then set this to true. And then show, which is like render, basically. It's like, actually turn the lights on and off correctly how it's supposed to be. Okay. So, essentially what, what it boils down to is if the current character is not a period, then we have the delay. Or if the current character is a period and the previous character also was a period, then we have the delay. But if the current character is a period and the previous character was not, then we do not. But let's look at the logic in here as well, non-blocking this time. If it is a string, we set a variable with the current time. If the text is the same, non-blocking scroll text. So this would be like, this would be false if the user has changed the text since the last frame that we called non-blocking marquee. Like if they, uh, they, I don't know how they would do that, I guess. Maybe call set self.text or something. Or I, I guess they would just call this again with new text. I'm not sure exactly. How would that change? I don't know. Let's keep going though. If text equals non-blocking text. So if it, if it hasn't changed, I'm sure we'll set this somewhere in here. If length is greater than four, if we delayed long enough and it's time to scroll. So if the current time is greater than the last scroll time plus the delay, the last scroll time equals now, because we're about to scroll. If there are characters left in the text, so if the current index plus one is less than the total characters we have, you know, like if there is a character to our right, if there's no character to our right, then we don't need to scroll. Uh, how's it going, Super Pencil? We're in the uh, YouTube chat. Hope you're having a good day, my friend. Uh, Non-block index plus equals one, so increment that self.push and so that will take basically take the character and like push it onto the right side of the display that's the way i think of it so like whatever character you give it uh it will render it in this far slot here and then it will push everything else to the left to make room for it so when we you know push a c it's going to draw a c here and then it's going to push everything else to the left to make room and then show so that it will actually render. We have else here, so this would be else if we are at the end of our string. If the current index plus one is the last, is, is past the end of the string, then we go into here, we say if we want to loop, then we will start back at the beginning. If we don't want to loop, then we will just do nothing, essentially and it will not be looping anymore until the user changes something. Okay, so that's all pretty straightforward. We have the else here, which is if the text is not the same, different text. So in this case, we say non-blocking scroll text equals text. So we update the non-blocking scroll text. That way, next time we know that it is the same if it comes in again. Update that, we say the last scroll time is equal to now. We save the timestamp, we say if text, if the length of it is less than or equal to four, then we just print the full string. But this logic is actually not quite right, is it? Because, because if the string was, if it was, if it was eight characters, but with four periods, like 5.5.5.5 .5 .5 .5 dot, then this would be false, but technically we should still we should still be doing this. So we need more logic here to check like 
if the string uses periods, how many length it can actually be. And we say if it's longer than four though, that's when we do this, which is where we say now I'm blocking scroll index equals three. We tell it we're gonna start on index three, which is the fourth index, right? Cause it's zero base, zero, one, two, three. That's the fourth element. And then we say that we're gonna print the first four, zero through three. So then next time this will get plus one. This will go up here, it'll get plus one. That's when we'll show index four, which is the fifth character. So if we could, how could we do this? Of that print or character in text. So that's going to be looping over the string one character at a time, calling self dot print on that character. What does self dot print actually do? So we call print once and it puts it here. How does print differ from push? Doesn't work. Probably we need to show. Yeah. Is print different than just push and show together? Yes. If value is string, then we call self.text.value underscore text. If it is a int or a float, then we call self. underscore number value decimal. Else unsupported type. If auto write is true, then call show. Push do. Scroll the marquee and add a character at the end. Scroll the display and add a character at the end. I don't really get how that's different than print. It seems like they both do the same thing. They both, they both put one on the far right edge and push everything else to the left to make room. I'm not actually sure why they both exist. Is this used somewhere else? Three usages. One of them is mine though from Blocking marquee text. Okay, well, so text, so so print calls text and text calls push. Okay. So ultimately, 
Mint is actually getting into push. Hmm. Hmm. So if we can get it to where we're just using print, and if we can have this same logic, then it should work. And then if we, if we can get the logic of non-blocking text to behave the same as blocking, then what we could do is inside the blocking one, we could actually just have our loop and we could be calling the non-blocking one. But it would be in a loop so that it wouldn't actually return. We go back to being blocking. For now, I'm gonna call this nb scroll marquee. But it's tricky because this currently has delay in it. We don't really want that, I think. I'm trying to keep in mind the reuse. So basically, instead of sleeping here, we're, we're never going to be sleeping, but instead what we would be doing is choosing to set the, uh, the last scroll time or not. If we are going to sleep... then we would set the last scroll time. And if we don't want to sleep, then we would actually just not set the last scroll time, which means that it would stay even further back in the past, further than delay, which means the next time we come through here again, it would still be in the past. So I think what we do is now equals time dot monotonic and then if we want to sleep then what we do is set self dot non blocking scroll time last scroll time equal to now. If we don't want to sleep then we just don't update this. It stays on what it was. And it's never used, and then this doesn't actually take delay. So now in here, instead of calling push, Oh, but this is inside of a for loop, though. Hold on, that's not going to work. Yeah, that's not going to work. We don't, we can't have this whole loop in one function. Essentially, we need it so that we call the function over and over, and each time we call it, it's one, 
Each time we call it, it's possibly one iteration. Well, this, this one would always be one iteration. But then inside of here, we would be choosing whether or not to call it based on the current time. Oh, there's a couple other uh, comments over in the YouTube chat. Let me, let me catch up over here. Does print render immediately while push doesn't render until show? Uh, that is true. Yeah, if auto show is true, then print will go immediately because it does have a check inside of it for that. This is probably from a while back when I was talking about that. Sorry, I didn't notice the chat until now. Scroll starts at the right, print starts at the left, and only scrolls when it runs out of room. Uh, print seems to start at the right. Print does seem to start at the right, not the left. Uh, need a non-blocking for loop. Yeah, maybe like a yield or something. I don't know if I want to use a yield, though. I'm not that versed in them, truthfully. I don't know the right way. I think what we want is basically to take this logic, character is dot, and then this thing here. I think we want to take this and move it into here. And then we would not really need this function. And then we would be calling this then from inside of here at the very end. I think we could change this up to be calling the non-blocking one to have a loop inside of here. So we're going to try to take this logic. Character is dot. So our character is... Where? This would be our character. but that's going to get reset every time. We have to have it on self. Otherwise, its value will disappear in between calls to this function. I want to call it actually previous PR prev at least because it's actually technically the last one, right? Like it's we have only one variable and then we get the next one. So this is really the previous one. Okay, so what we will do is after we've done show, we update this. So we say previous after show, we say previous character equals current character. So now that is set for the next time around. Oh, but uh, we got to compare. Right, right. We don't want the actual character. We want whether or not it's a dot. It's a problem. Oh. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on, text, here we go. Text, okay. if that's a dot, then set this to true, else set it to false. And then here we would say, basically if this, let's say character equals, This character character is not dot, or if previous character is dot.
So we need to update the time. Yeah, so here we don't want to update the time so soon. We want to actually wait. We want to actually wait for this. This is when we update the time. And then these we actually do here. We always want to do these, but we only want to update the time if we're going to pause, basically. So if we are going to pause, then we update this time. That means we'll wait another cycle of delay seconds until we make the next move. If we don't want to pause, then we don't update that, which means immediately the next time you call this, then it's going to go again. In our case, we're calling it really fast from main loop, so that will be almost instantaneously that we go again. Okay. And we update this, and then, and then instead of push, I guess, let's do print, right? We might as well do the same there. I don't know. Does it make any difference in our case? I'm not sure it's going to matter. The end of the day, truthfully, but we'll see. Okay. So that was all only if there are characters left. Uh, if we are at the end of the string, then what do we want to do? If loop is true, then set index back to minus one, which means it will plus one and go to zero next iteration. Uh... Because it increments before it actually... Oh, shoot. You know what? We need to increment before we do this, actually. Wow, I'm glad I caught that. Yeah, we want to increment before we get this. Because that's how it's written. Is like, this is going to negative 1, so that when it loops back around, this puts it at 0. Okay, so if we're at the end, then... If loop is true, put that back to negative one. We could go push a space. I don't know. We could print a space, I suppose. I don't know if it will matter. We could get rid of show. In fact, we could actually... We could just get rid of show on both of these. Uh, delete. I'm not sure what you mean, delete. Delete. I don't know what you mean, delete. These already use print, and these are only if these are if it's different text. So if it's different text, then then we're always gonna start with the first four. Four. We actually need to fix the logic so that it's more than four, though. How are we gonna do that? All right, let's worry about that afterwards. This, it's actually kind of complicated logic, right? Because it's like, it's four if there's no periods, and then if there are periods, it's like, if there are periods every other character, then it goes up to eight. But if it's like two periods in a row, then it doesn't count up as much, so... That is tricky. What? How does Marquis handle that? So on Marquis... Let's see, it would be text. You would go into here. We call scroll marquee. It would be looping for character and text, which would only be, let's say, three characters. And then it would just print the character. So one thing is you would, uh, it's, it would scroll a little bit unnecessarily. Text is only one, two, three. You call marquee on one, two, three. Push the space across. So another difference is um, marquee does not put a space in there for you, whereas non-blocking marquee does actually put an extra space. Which I kind of prefer, but I guess we could make it optional. 
Because it's hard to tell where it ends and then where it begins, right? Th this makes it a little bit easier to tell where it ends and begins. Okay, so it actually starts with only one thing showing. So it scrolls on even the beginning, which that part's actually different. Non-blocking marquee, it would put the entire thing. And so maybe if we're not gonna if we're not gonna put the entire thing, then maybe the logic is actually easier because we don't care if it's four versus eight versus dots every other. We don't care about any of that if we're not gonna try to put the whole thing we always just go one digit at a time, then it doesn't matter what digits it is because we already have logic handling it now. Specify how many spaces to put between. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. I think space or no space is probably what I'm gonna aim for. Number of spaces is a little bit harder. At one point in time, I actually had in mind that I wanted to do something like what you say, uh, something like they're allowed to specify how many spaces, but the way I was thinking about it was they're allowed to specify what string they want to be the separator. So if they wanted to use a dash or star or whatever, they could choose a different character or string, in fact, they could use multiple characters, so like two spaces or three spaces or whatever. Um, it got more complex than I wanted it to be, though, when I was trying to do that. And so I ended up going back to making it simpler to just, right now it's hard-coded at just a space. Uh, we might make it, I think we'll make it so it's like either space or no space, but I probably won't work on multiple spaces right now. The the thing though is like, I don't think inside of here is not the place for that, because the other thing is like user code always gets final say how many spaces there are, right? Like you, you can put however many spaces you want inside this. Um, in fact, maybe that's an argument for not having the space at all, because you could always put your own. I still kind of like it if it would offer to put one for you just so you don't actually have to put that extra space in all of your strings, but I think if you want multiples or a different character or something like that, that's when it's like, you know, you could include that here. Whatever character you want, you could just always put it into your string, whether it's extra spaces or anything else. Similar character with kerning algorithm. So if it is different text, what do we want to do? We don't want to just print 0 to 3 like this. If it's different text, if it is different text, we want to clear we want to clear the display, which we saw before. That was this. We want to clear the display. We, we definitely want to change the text variable to be that. We want to put the scroll time to now. Yeah, I think we want to, yeah, I think we do want to put the scroll time to now. Uh, and then we just want to print the first character. I think that's all we want to do here. We don't even need this if statement at all, we want to just print the first character. Oh, we need to set the index too, though. How come nothing... It, well, this is setting... I see, this is setting the index. Are We're going to be on... Um, not going to be doing three anymore. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is... It's deleting my stuff? Jeez. Okay, uh, we're not going to be on three anymore. Is it zero or one? We want it to be on zero. So next time through, it's going to plus one, get to one, which means it's going to put the second character, which is perfect because we're about to put the first character. 
So we put that on zero. We fill false to turn everything off. We set the text so that we keep track of it for next time we get called. We set the scroll time to now. We print the first character, and that's it. Print um, text zero, or obviously we could call this variable. And we know it's zero because we just set it. Okay, save this. Let's copy this all back over. I'm just going to delete and do it again. Okay, so this is using blocking. I'm just going to let it run so we can see it. So it starts on the left and then it goes over. It does have no space. Let's do let's change that while we're here. Let's make it match at least currently with no space. We'll add maybe an extra keyword argument or something for the yes space, no space option. Oh, this is the display one, okay. Wrong file. Okay, let's add one more variable called space between. It's false by default. We'll keep the default to be the same as blocking. What's wrong with this? Oh. Good thing we didn't run it yet. Um, we'll do here if space between. Do this. And this one is on blocking. I was going to say we could, we'll add it to here. That way, if you're using the blocking version, you also get the option of space between. It's actually going to be easier, though, to wait until we make this one use the non blocking one. Um, we ended up using this, so I'll delete it. Once this one is calling the non-blocking one, then it's super easy. We can just add that argument here and then pass it through to the non-blocking one, and it will get the correct behavior. Whereas if we want to do it right now, we're going to have to like add logic inside here, which makes no sense because we're going to not be using that in a minute. So uh, I may be wrong when you update the index, wouldn't EU plus equals three, and then your array indices would be uh, index plus three. Uh, I don't think so. That would make it s so we're not we're we're only scrolling one digit at a time. We're not scrolling an entire screen of four digits, uh, if that makes any sense. So uh, if we maybe let's slow it down even further here, let's say um, Delay. Let's put it on one second just so it's nice and slow. So whenever one digit is displaying only, it should be here. And then after that, it's here and here. So like we only move by one digit. We're not moving by like entire pages of four digits, um, if that makes sense. Like we're not showing an entire page of four and then changing to a new page of four. What we're doing is showing one digit then showing the next one and scrolling, then showing the next one and scrolling, showing the next one and scrolling, so on and so forth. So we're always just moving by one rather than moving by three ever. I don't know why this keeps resetting itself. Maybe that's why I turned auto reload off before, I guess. I don't, we're not making any file writes in here at least, not that I know of. I guess maybe the IDE is though. Okay, yeah, so it would be, it would not be, it would be tricky to add the space between there and it would end up being a waste of time as long as we are actually going to make this reuse, so I'm not going to bother. 
Put this on one. Let's see if this behaves the same now. Uh oh. What did I do wrong? Feels like we did not update the. Let's put this back to point two. I don't. I'm pretty sure my problem is not the speed though. Seems like it's just never going on. Hopefully we have some kind of logic that's wrong inside of here. What are we doing? Cool. I don't know if we need we might not need this anymore. Oh, that's actually not only do we might not need this anymore, that's actually what's killing us right now. Because we have only three digits. So this is false, therefore we're not doing it. Do we need to do anything separate? I don't think so, right? We used to have logic that would place all of them on the screen, but we don't want that anymore. What we want to do is just scroll the however many digits we have, because that's what the blocking one does. go i have it on really slow right now still it's on a one second delay we do now no longer have the space we're good there we could go so now we could go space between like this then we would get the space back mm. i think it scrolled twice right Yeah, it scrolled twice. See, the space should be at the end. Why is it doing that? Are we off by one here? Should this not be plus one? Or should it be less than equals? It can't be less than equals, because if it was equal to the length, then it will be too long. And we have to have plus one. Why are we off by one? If... There are characters left in the text if index plus one is less than the length of the text. So our text is three characters. Length of text is three. Current index would be zero, one, say two, when the three is showing, zero, one, two. And at that point, 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 is not less than 3. Therefore, we go to here. Loop is true. Roll index negative 1. If space between, print space. Why does... Oh, you know what? It's uh, with it's the time. It's the time. We didn't set the time. We need this to be now. We do this. Because what it's doing is actually it is putting the space in the right spot, but then it's instantly scrolling again. Yeah, because we didn't set the time here. That, that means the next time it gets called, it will instantly scroll. And in our case, again, it's getting called very, very fast inside main loop. So instantaneously it scrolled. There we go. This is what we want, though. That's looking good.
I was meant to say comment slash delete the show function last time. Low typer. Thanks for the interesting stream. Yeah, awesome. I'm glad you found it interesting. Thanks for hanging out, chatting along. Okay, that's looking good. Looking good. I like that. Um, space between. We don't have that choice up here, but let's just make sure this looks the same. It's gonna be no space between, but that's fine. Pretty much looking the same. Okay. Let's go back to this one, but let's do it just like this instead. Is B the same as 8? Capital B? No. Much fancier. Much fancier, but it is fancier. Just realized I was watching like 10 minutes behind. Oh, well, my bad. Uh, no worries. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Okay, so this one's kind of the torture test one. This one, we'll see if it behaves the same. I'm going to take this back off for now. Yeah. Nice. It looks the same to me now. Yeah, we don't have any kind of stuttering or anything going on. They look the exact same now. That time I did actually happen to look down at the physical device, that was totally just a hiccup in the video stream, not the actual device. The actual physical device has been scrolling at the same rate this whole time, but the, uh, the video stream here kind of like slowed down and then caught back up really fast. But that's not, the actual device did not do that. Okay. So in terms of reuse now, you should be able to, inside of Marquee, just call non-blocking Marquee. You know what we need though, is we need to know when it's done. Because if loop is false, then we need to somehow return at the end of this. So we need to actually return from this whether or not we reach the end of the string and loop is false. If, if loop is false, I mean, if loop is true, then we don't care. We'll never return true in that case. But if loop is false, then... Eventually, we want to return through or whatever to indicate that we made it to the end. Is that yellow? Expected. Oh, because we didn't actually put the return. See, the thing, I, I mean, it's, it's an optional, or I, I mean, I guess we could just always return false. So we're, we would return that here, else if loop is not true and we made it to the end, that is when 
we return. But do we need to add more spaces? Is it supposed to scroll all the way off the left side? Let's return all the way off the left side. I don't know. Let's comment this back out for now. So let's go back to regular. Yeah. I mean, it has, well, if loop, but we're saying if loop is not true. Yeah, we don't care about loop. What does this do? Does it scroll all the way off the left edge or does it, does it stop when the three is here? Stops when the three is here. Okay, it does not scroll off the left edge. That's good. That actually makes this much easier. Okay, so yeah, we just go here. We return true. Uh, everywhere else we return false if we, any every other place we return false any other possibility turn false and then all this is is if it returns true that means that it made it to the end of the string and loop was false and so then in here we should be able to say so marquee if instance is string Self dot fill false, so we do that. If loop, we need if loop. I don't know if I don't think we need if loop. I think what we do is with this. So I think what we do is uh, just while true, while true, and we say if self dot non blocking marquee, and we pass through all the same stuff. So we say text equals text. We say delay equals delay. We say loop equals loop. Pass through all the same stuff. And then if that returns true, that is when we return from the blocking function. Else, if that does not return true, then we just keep looping. Nice. So, so far we got the same behavior. Nice. Oops, I accidentally saved it again, so it's going to restart an extra time there. And now we're back to no longer returning, because it's able to loop true. If this was smaller, it shouldn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna go like this first. I'm gonna put this back here. Do this. We're just gonna compare one more time blocking and non blocking. So, this one is blocking with just one, two, three. This would be non blocking with one, two, three. And I'll go space between false. That way it's the exact same. So, this should be the exact same. Perfect. Just obviously this is now... Are we passing? Pass? A minute. This must still let this get called actually. I'm not sure about this. Put this back down. Perfect. Yeah, exact same as what we had with blocking. Let's go non-blocking with four characters. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Perfect, okay. You know, I think I have two of these feather wings. We could bust out another one. I don't have another doublet ready to go, though. 
would be nice to run it side by side, one blocking and one not. I guess that's why I had the pass here, though, is because of the, uh, it's empty, it's invalid. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four blocking. Is the exact same. And good there. Go back to this mega string one. Good. And then we just want to make sure that non-blocking has the exact same here. Oh. I think that's my camera feed again though, right? Yeah. It's the camera feed again. One thing that we need to make sure is that it is actually returning when loop is false, this one. So it just occurred to me we wouldn't actually know if it returned or not the way the code was before. Now we have a print, so we'll see it. Nice, okay, yeah, definitely does return. Perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, we did change this quite a bit, so I'm gonna grab this code and bring it back over to the repo. And we'll go and do some cleanup here because I definitely left some limited out stuff. And other... this could go away. This, I think, is unused now. No usages. Let's comment that out over here. Just to make sure. What? This one's different. It has a cycle. I don't know what that's about. Oh, I mean, am I in the, I'm in the display one, I'm in the display one. Did I change anything in here? Yeah, that's interesting though, the, the display one that we looked at first, I didn't realize that actually had non-blocking built in already. That's pretty cool. This is where we want to be, except I'm not, I'm still not on the device. Get rid of all of this. You no longer need show because print is on. And print. I mean, print relies on auto show technically. Auto write. How come it's called auto write, but the function is called show? I feel like those should match. It should either be auto show and show, or it should be auto write and write. So we'll make it not actually work. That's actually the th that would be the case with the currently released one. Truthfully, 
I would say... It probably just um, probably just set it to true, even if it's false. This is the wrong copy of this. Many copies of too many things. it up with space between here. Technically, we could actually add it to here pretty much for free at this point, because we could add this and just say, pass it through, like we're doing everything else here. This actually gives you new functionality that we didn't have, well, I mean, you, you, it's back to what I said before, honestly, you could put the space in your string, so it's not really new functionality, like you always could achieve it. You just would have to put the space in your string is all. So I know. I have auto write set to full still, yeah. I think, I don't know, that's maybe a separate initiative, but it might be worth just setting that to true inside of both of these functions, honestly. Like, uh, not really a good reason for you to be calling marquee if auto writes off because it won't be working. So this is after a dot and before the eights, which is coming up right here. Right there, we had a dot before the eights. This one, it's much harder to tell, honestly, because the dot almost looks like a space anyway. This one should be easier, though, because the 4 and the 8, they would be right next to each other, but now there'll be a space, so yeah, we have that space in between. Right there was it. Then, But if we do false, we're back to no space, so 4 and the 8 will be next to each other. Oh. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, hold up, hold up. We're inside Marky here. This is gray, which means it thinks it's not being used. Which is, right? Uh, yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. That's not what we want. Turns out when you just hard code true, then the value will be true. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So now the four and the eight are next to each other. No space between them. Right at the end here, coming up right there. Okay, perfect. Grab this, put it back in the repo. Clean it up. All right, so non-blocking marquee, it's got all of this. The uh, only comments that remain are actually comments telling you about the code. 
There are no random commented out chunks of code, he says, well, he deletes this one real quick. Then I'm pretty sure, so that, yeah, this is where we're back around full circle now. I'm pretty sure we can just get rid of this. This should have no usages now. Yeah. How's it going, DJ Devin? Let's make sure this still works. Should be basically the exact same now, because we're not calling this anymore, so... We're on the blocking one still. Whoops, we should be. You know, it would be interesting is to spawn the virtual one and the real one the same display and since we have non-blocking now we would be able to do that be kind of a fun thing to do okay yeah we can definitely get rid of that we could delete this Hopefully we could delete this too instead of copying it back what i'm going to do is actually just head back over to the repo and delete it here Uh, watchdog again. Alright, why is this mad? Expected two blank lines, one found. I don't know, whatever. Just... Should I do that? Maybe I don't want to do that. Undo... Pre commit. Pre commit run a back. Yes, okay. In. Like we had a pilot failure. And you sleep. Yeah, we don't use sleep anymore because now the blocking marquee is calling the non blocking marquee. So we don't have to call we don't have to call sleep anymore. Um I mean I guess we could keep it and do it still. I don't really see a need to though. I think we just get rid of it. Is this like async IO for segmented display? Not quite. Not uh, not async IO. It's not going to allow you to write your code using the async IO syntax. What it is though is going to allow you to be scrolling the text here as well as doing other things on the device. Um, so I can see how it sounds similar to async IO, but it's not it's not specifically the async IO syntax. But it is allowing you to kind of like juggle and do multiple things, if that makes sense. It's not using the actual like async await syntax. Uh, somebody could add that, I think. Now that there is a non-blocking scroll, I think you could probably pretty easily add some awaitable functions and then you could use this with the actual async and await um yeah basically let's put the neopixel back actually i'll show you the the main thing that this is good for is that we can have this so turn this back on so so right now i'm going to save this uh nothing is going to change we are just going to be scrolling this text here and nothing is going to change. Um, and so this is illustrating how when we use the blocking marquee, which is what this one is, which is the one that currently exists today, when we use the blocking marquee, we cannot do anything else. We cannot change the NeoPixel, which is what we're trying to do here. It's currently just set to red because of something else set it to red and nothing else has changed it since then. Um, but we have code here that's trying to change it. It's trying to change it to green and then pink and then back to green and back to pink, back and forth, back and forth. But it's not actually doing that because this code here is blocking it. It's never actually making it down to here because we never return from this. Um, you might think, well, okay, well, loop is true, so maybe what if you just did loop false, and maybe what if you put this down here, like, right, maybe we could do it like this. 
put the blocking one here, we could say this. You might think maybe this would work. In this kind of little bit, this will scroll the text across. And then after it's done, it will change the LED. So like it changed, but now we're kind of like stuck in here again. Now we're no longer scrolling this one. I'm not entirely sure why though. I guess that's... Wait a minute, why are we not scrolling that one? Something, that's actually a bug, I think. I'm glad we did this, because I'm pretty sure that's a bug. If you finish, if you have loop false, you should, uh, it's not resetting the index, I think, right? It's not resetting the index. Yeah, when we return here, we should actually be setting the index as well. We should do this either way. In fact, maybe we just do this up here, I guess, right? Sorry, short detour. I promise I'll tie it back together though here in a minute. Okay, there we go. So now the LED changed once and then we scroll the entire screen, uh, string rather, we scroll the entire thing, then the LED can change again. Then we scroll the entire string again, then the LED can change. Then we scroll the entire thing again, then the LED will change. But what if what we really want is the LED to blink back and forth while we are scrolling this. So with the blocking marquee like this, with the existing API, because it's blocking, we cannot achieve that. We cannot be scrolling our text and blinking this back and forth at the same time. But with the non-blocking marquee, which is the new part that I have now added, we can. So we can have this blinking back and forth, yellow and green, and we can have this scrolling across at the same time. Uh, and in fact, we could have even more stuff going on if we wanted. We could be running HTTP server, we could be running LED animations instead of just this basic blinking back and forth. We could be doing fades. We could be doing display IO stuff if we wanted. We could be doing anything else we want because now this function returns pretty much instantaneously. So we can put other stuff inside our main loop. All right, that was a very long-winded explanation, but that's what this is giving you the ability to do is like scroll this text and have other stuff happening at the same time. We did end up changing this again, which means... Let me get rid of this. Copy this again, back to the old repo. Let me use Marquee with seven segment, didn't even know it behaved like that. Nice find whoever got that one. Yeah. I essentially, I found it when I was trying to make a web server that would let you set the text to scroll. I found we couldn't do it because we couldn't have the web server running while this thing was scrolling. That was my original motivation for adding the non-blocking. Pass pre-commit? Nope. Probably the same two things we had before, right? We're going to have the exact same. Yeah, new sleep because we changed it in here, but then I went back and copied back over it again. So now we're passing. It cut out the extra code, I think. You should see that in the change here. It's a little bit better. So we got rid of our time sleep import. Have. New variable nb previous chars dot. Here we have non blocking marquee got changed by black to be three lines instead of one. We added the space between argument and doc string. Typed? Not typed. Let's go ahead and type it.
we got rid of the logic for whether or not it's four characters or not because we'd have figured out that that's not actually important if we want to match the blocking behavior because it didn't have different behavior in that case. Got rid of that and then change around inside of here how stuff works because we now have logic checking for the periods, either like one period by itself versus two together. This kind of moved down. It shows it as being deleted and added, but like really it just moved down a bit. We have if space between, we added that as an argument so we can check now. We fixed this by updating the time. No, we fixed this by setting the index. The time was always down here. The time we set because yeah, we didn't want our space to immediately get pushed again. We return true if we are at the end of the word. Bring whatever it is, it could be more than one word. Else, set that back to zero. This is else uh, the text changed basically. So if the text changed, we wanna go to zero. We should test that though, actually. I didn't, I have not attested that. Um, test that. We've always been scrolling the same text, so. Let's say message one, hello, message two, deep divers. So then let's go scroll message one, if now, let's say start time maybe? Start time equals time dot monotonic. And let's say if now plus 10 seconds, 10.0 now plus, that's wrong, we don't want now though. We want uh, start time. If start time plus 10 seconds is less than or equal to now, let's just go less than actually. If it's less than now, Then we do this, and else we do message two. So this will change, so we can make sure that when we change between messages, we start scrolling at the correct character. Because if there's a logic bug, then we might start scrolling at like index one instead of, also I am backwards on my logic, so we have deep divers instead of hello, but that's fine. We'll wait 10 seconds. There it goes, okay, so then it changed to hello. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it did it correctly. It's really fast though. Let's do this, let's change these around, let's slow this a bit as well, just so it's like, not quite as fast. Okay, yeah, so we started correct there. Got our full hello, that's all looking good. So we wanted the D to show up here. Nice. Yeah, that's perfect. Cool. Okay. Didn't I, did I change anything? I don't think I changed anything. Marquee got changed by black because I added an argument, so it made it long enough that it wanted to split to multiple lines. We added the doc string for the argument. The new marquee now just calls non-blocking marquee inside of a loop and returns whenever it's time. The old marquee actually had logic for the dots. Well, it called actually scroll marquee, which had the logic for the dots. But in our case, we got rid of that because now we can reuse non-blocking. Cool, so that is looking good. It is not still passing, so I'm glad that I ran it again. I was sure we got to not passing, but that's all right. a refactor
other marquee. I wonder how many other marquee using libraries this can improve to. Matrix panel. I do not know about the matrix. That one might be trickier. Apologize for SSD. No clue it would cause domino effect. A lot of other libraries. I don't think. I don't think it did necessarily. I mean, I don't. I, either way, I don't think you have anything to apologize for. Like just bringing something up is never going to be a problem. I don't think. I mean, like there's a couple other ones. I think it's a, only a handful. I don't know. Dan was going to look into it. I off the top of my head though, I think it's like less than half a dozen. I could be wrong. Maybe it's more. I don't think it's that many though. I only thought it was the one library. I think there's maybe like. I don't know. My my gut instinct is like maybe two or three. Maybe two or three. I think there's more than one, but it's not very many. Because basically the deal is it's like only the ones that are super old, only the ones that existed before Display IO. And then like after Display IO came into existence, all the displays since then they've only gotten Display IO. Um I I I think for what's worth, I think going back and adding frame buffer IO to the name of the frame buffer ones. Uh, this is like definitely net positive change as well. So like, once we make that change, I think it will be less confusing overall. So I think it's a good thing. Like I said, nothing to apologize for, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, we got that pushed. Uh, I'll hang out for just a minute and make sure that this passes um, actions. It should because we ran it locally. So hopefully it is. Uh, I guess I, I didn't do the docs. Maybe we use docs. Let's build so we should pass but we'll see um and then i'll head out after that so thanks for hanging out to everybody uh hope everyone has a good rest of your evening and all that kind of stuff if you are interested in this kind of content and you want some more of it you are in luck because i will be back at 10 a.m central time tomorrow morning um it is currently about 6 p.m central time and i'll be back at 10 a.m central time so 14 hours from now, I'll be back again, but I'll be over on my own channel on Twitch and YouTube. I will be streaming some more work on CircuitPython stuff. Uh, we made it pretty much to the end of this, so I probably won't be working on this specifically, um, but I will be getting into something, and that something will definitely be related to CircuitPython somehow. So if you're interested and want to, some more of this tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., that's the place to be. Uh, you can join me back in the Discord here. I'll drop links when I'm about to get started. Otherwise, you can follow me over on Twitch if you want notifications for that. Um, we did pass, so I will just leave a message here. And then maybe re-request review. Looking. I guess it's already there. I don't know. It's already there. I don't know if it does anything. If I remove it and add it back. Does that like? Let's see. What I'm interested in is bumping it down at the bottom here. It might not actually do anything though. Did anything? 
it's because it's already requested, maybe. I don't know. Didn't wait long enough. There we go. Okay, yeah, now it says removed down there, so we add it back. Nice. Yeah, there it is. Okay, refresh that so it's on there. Cool. Uh, looking forward to coffee in the morning. Uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central Time. Yep. Um, so, yeah, thanks for hanging out, uh, everybody. Uh, I had a, let's see, I had a marquee last time used on an old site. Nice. I like that, uh, I like that submarine there. That's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. I don't recognize what that's from. It's like a cartoon or something, but a game, maybe? Is that from, uh... So from the balloons game, maybe? There's some stuff that looks like that in the balloons game. I don't know. Pretty cool looking, though. All right. Uh, take it easy, everyone. Have a good night. I will see uh, anybody who wants to follow along again tomorrow. I'll see you in the morning. Otherwise, uh, I will bid you farewell for now, and I'll see you next time uh, you show up for a stream. Thanks for watching, and I hope everyone has a good rest of your evening.